Hello friends, welcome to Global Tech Learn. In today's video, we will learn few important keywords used while creating a table in SQL Server. So here you can see default, sequence, auto increment, check or constant. These are the different keywords or I would say functionalities available in, in SQL Server. So let's start with the default. By name itself, we can understand that it will populate some default value. So default is the keyword that we can use while creating a table. So for that, let's jump into the SQL Server and try to create one table. So right now I am in a SQL Server Management Studio and here we can try to create one employee table. So for that, let's go to tables and here we can go to create a new table. And here we can provide employee ID. Let's give data type as integer. Then we can provide employee name. Uh, let's make it and work here. Thereafter, we can add employee department. As work here. Now here you can see under property section, we have various options and there we have option as default value so under default value we can pass the value that is going to configure at the table column level that if this we are not passing the value for this particular column while inserting the data then the default value will be get populated so for example let's say under department if there is no department provided for the employee then we want to consider it as admin department so in that case we can say admin and that's it and let's save this table and let's give it name as a employee master now we have table available let's refresh the list of objects under table and expand this and here we should have employee master table now let's try to insert the data in this table so first we will try with the design mode and let's start to insert data so employee id is one and employee name let's say ryan and department we will not pass and next time let's say provide Michael and this time I will provide department as finance and let's hit the tab and now let's close this table and now let's query data from this table here we can see we have admin for the Ryan. Now let's try to insert record using query and for that let me write one more statement insert enter employee master and under values let me provide some other value like 3 as employee id and employee name as sam and as a department this time let me provide null and let's execute this query our row inserted successfully now let's query all the data from employee master table and here you can see it is null because we provided null value now this time I will provide employee ID and employee name and here let me add the new values so this is employee number is 4 and value let me pass as Robin and let's let's execute this query now 
so record has inserted successfully now let's list the data once again and this time you can see for robin the admin has passed so we can infer here that by default means if we are not passing any value to the field then it will automatically populate the default value for that field but if we are passing any value or even null then it is going to consider that value so this was the default now let's move on to the sequence sequence is the a type of object in sql server that holds the value and that keep increase or decrease it based on the configuration and hold this value in sql server so for example let's first go to the list of sequence so here you can see under database under programmability we have object category called c category called sequences and under that we can see we have one sequence so here let me try to create one sequence for that let me right click on this and create new sequence and here you can see we have sequence creation window and here we can pass the sequence name for this let me pass sequence prefix then let me pass test for now and here we have sequence test and then the schema where we want to create a sequence then data type of the sequence so here we should get all the numeric data types only so for now let me keep this big integer only and then we have to pass the start value so let me pass this as a one and then how we want to increment it this is where the sequence properties are going to update so here we have to make sure how we want to sequence to be increased so let's say whenever we call the sequence it should be increased by one only and here if we want to set the minimum value or maximum value so if we are not going to set then it, it will gonna to uh, take as a maximum number value so we will skip this for now and let's keep everything else as a default only and let me click click on the ok and here you can see we have sequence test available now let me get the values for the sequence so for that we can write the query select star from and then we have to provide the sequence so that is going to call from sys dot sequences s where s star sequence name is equals to then our object name that is seq underscore test now let's execute this query and here you can see we have our sequence along with all its properties and here we can see like what is the type of the object when it was created modified and if we go towards the right here we will get the important information that is what is the start value how it is going to increment and then what is the maximum minimum value that we just seen we didn't pass anything so that's why it is taking the maximum number of the number and then here if we go to the last here we will see the, what is the current value and what is the last used value so these are the four most useful parameters that usually we use so let me repeat that the most useful properties of this sequence are the first is what is the start value and then what is the increment value and then we have the what is the last used value and what is the current value these are the most useful fields that we are going to call while using the sequence now let's try to increase the sequence and for that we have to call it select next value for and here we have to pass the sequence name so let me pass this now here instead of running it here let me cut this let me open a new sql window and here let me paste this query and let's execute this query from this window and here you can see the next value 
we are getting one now let's execute uh, the sequence query to pull all the current properties of the sequence and let's execute this and now if I go towards right so here we can see we start value 1 increment is 1 that is as is because this is something we configured while creating the sequence and now if I go further towards the right so now here in last use value we have 1 and current value is 1 now let's see what is the latest value so here we previously we seen we have last use value null because it we didn't use any value and then current value is 1 but in the latest statement we have current value 1 and last value is 1 now let's execute this query once again to get the next value now we have 2 and now let's execute this query once again now let me go to the last and here you can see the last use value is 2 and current value is 2 that means the sequence has been incremented by 1 and the latest value is 2 let's do let's execute this query once again now it is 3 so let's execute let's list all the properties of the sequence now if we go to the right here we can see we have current value 3 and the last used value is 3 so in this way you can see we can maintain a sequence of number that is going to maintain within the sequences now let's understand when we use the sequence usually we use sequence when we want to maintain the sequence independently that means th that is something outside the other objects and it is running independently we can call it from various objects such as query stored procedure functions triggers from anywhere we can call it and we can maintain the value independently it is very useful when we want to keep values such as employee id now let's go to the auto increment this is something like the sequence but it is related to the table so for that let me go to table and create table once again and let's create this as an employee id let me define as a data type as integer and here under properties here we have identity property and under identity we can mark it as a yes and here you can see we have identity increment and identity seed so here we are saying identity should be increased by one so as soon as we enable the identity you can see the allow nulls has been disabled automatically now let me add one more field employee name let me mark it as a worker and let's save this let me name it as a employee test and now under tables we should have emp underscore test table so let me expand all the objects and here we have table now let's query this table and here we have blank table now let's try to insert some data in this table we can write insert into the table name and then we have to provide the column names so here for employee id since we have already configured the auto increment so it is going to populate value incremented by one automatically so we don't need to provide any value for this column and we can provide just the employee name so let me add emp name and then we have to provide the values and under values let me add ryan and that's it let me execute this query and now let's list the data from this table once again and here you can see we pass only ryan as a value for employee name and employee id value get automatically populated now let's add one more record uh, this time let me pass it as michael and let's execute this query so we inserted one more record in this table now let's list all the records from the table 
and here you can see we added only Michael but employee ID automatically populated with number 2 so in this way you can see it works like a sequence only but this time instead of independent sequence at the database level we have created kind of sequence within the table only so this particular sequence is tied with the employee ID column within the employee test table this table this auto increment identity feature is very useful when we want numeric column this should have unique number and it should keep increase by automatically we don't need to calculate the latest value each time while inserting data in the table now let's move on to the check the check is the again the table creation level property where we can configure the check that is going to check each time while we insert the data so for that let me create one more table this time and let's again add employee id integer and then employee name Uh, let's make it worker and then let's say we have age that is type as integer so now on the age column we can right click and we can click on the check constraint over here so under check constraint let me add one constraint and here we can configure the expression so let's say for employee age we want to make sure each employee must be age greater than 18 so for that let me add constraint that age greater than is equals to 18 let's click ok and let me name it as a check employee age And let me close this window now and let me save this table so let's say employee test one and let me click on ok and now the table has created successfully and this time let's list data from the table so that is select star from emp underscore test one and here we can see we have zero records in this table now let's try to insert data in this table from design window first so for that refresh the list of objects and here we have emp underscore test one let's click on edit top 200 records and let's try to insert it over here so for that let me insert employee id one employee name as ryan and under age let me insert 25 now, as soon as I hit the enter you can see the record got committed successfully so that means it has accepted 25 age that is expected now let me insert one more record too and this time name is Michael and age let me insert 16 and here it should not allow me to insert 16 as a age because the expression or the rule check that we have configured is the the age must be greater than 18 so let's hit the tab and here you can see we are getting the message that the data in a row 2 was not committed so let me click on ok and now this time let me hit 19 and let me hit tab and here you can see the row got committed so in this way you can see we can configure in the expression to set the rule that is to be checked each time while inserting data in the table so this is very useful when we know the business logic or the business rules that we want to implement at the database level itself now let's move on to the next item that is constraint this is again the same constraint only but this time the only difference would be the uniqueness so under constraint we already seen that we can create a rule but let's say if i want to create one more constraint so now let's create one more table and this time let's create a table from sql server management studio query window so here 
let me write the create table command and here for let's write create table employee underscore test two and under columns let's provide employee id as integer then employee name as var care and now here we want to add one constraint so for that we can add constraint and then we have to provide the constraint name so let me add it as so let me add as unique constraint and the constraint name should be an employee name so let me add as employee name and the constraint is and then we have to provide the field name that is employee name and that's it so here in line one you can see we are creating a table and thereafter we are adding one extra line for the constraint there we are setting a condition that employee name should be unique while creating or inserting any record within this table so let me execute this query and here you can see the table got created successfully now let's try to insert data in this table so insert into employee test 2 and let's try to pass some value so employee id is 1 and employee name is ryan and let's try to insert this oh, let me pass the field names employee id employee name and values yep that's it now let's execute and here you can see the rows inserted successfully let me list the data from this table and now let's try to insert another row with same name and this time it should throw error because we have applied unique constraint on the employee name column here you can see the violation of unique constraint so it is not allowing us to insert duplicate value in the employee name column because of constraint now let's try to insert another value michael and this inserted successfully now let's list the data and here we have michael value so in this way we can set the constraint or check on the table for uniqueness or we want to validate set a rule to validate the data while inserting into the table this usually helps to maintain the data quality for the tables also the default sequence and auto increments are features that helps to improve the table performance as well as the control the values within the data. I hope you learned something new today. If you have any question for any of these features then please let me know in comment window.